Hey everybody, I'm Dr. James Gaeta. Today we're going to talk about the ketogenic diet uh, and what it's all about. So we're calling it Keto 101. So what is a ketogenic diet? Okay, I think that it's best explained by Dr. Andreas Enfeldt. He's a Swedish doctor who specializes in family medicine. He says that a keto or ketogenic diet it's a very low carbohydrate diet, which turns the body into a fat burning machine, as many proven benefits for weight loss, health, and performance. Now, for you to understand, ketones are small molecules produced in the liver. They're used as fuel throughout the body. Now, on a ketogenic diet, Dr. Enfeld writes, your entire body switches its fuel supply to run almost entirely on fat. Insulin levels become very low, and fat burning increases dramatically. It becomes easy to access your fat stores to burn them off. This is obviously great if you're trying to lose weight. There are also less obvious benefits, such as less hunger and steady supply of energy. Now, to define a ketogenic diet, we have to understand the keto macros, as we call them, which means the percentages of protein, fat, and carbohydrates. So a ketogenic diet will give you about 65 to 75% of your calories from healthy fats. 15 to 25% will come from proteins and five to 10% will come from carbohydrate. So if you're a really active person or an athlete, about 50 grams a day of uh, carbohydrates can still keep you in ketosis. However, if you're a bit more sedentary and you're not really hitting the gym every day, 20 grams uh, for a sedentary person per day is a goal that we're, you know, we're shooting for. Next, we're gonna look into a little greater detail at the benefits of eating a ketogenic diet. Okay, losing the keto way. The number one reason why people choose a ketogenic diet is to lose weight. Uh, Dominic D'Agostino, he's a PhD that specializes in the ketogenic diet. He likes to say that ketones keep the brain happy even when you're in a calorie deficient state. Appetite regulation is incredibly complex, but Dominic has noticed both anecdotally and in the literature that being in the state of ketosis makes it very easy to regulate your appetite. Regulate appetite and the weight stays off naturally. All right, so on that whole line of curbing your appetite, this benefit of reducing hunger really is one of the major secrets to people being so successful with this diet. So according to Mark Sisson, he's a medical physician responsible for the book, The Keto Reset Diet. Eating fat does not make you fat. Rather, eating healthy sources of fat will help you better burn stored body fat because fat doesn't stimulate insulin. It'll stabilize your appetite and energy levels. It provides a high level of satiety and satisfaction because fat tastes good. And it helps you regulate the prominent appetite stimulating hormone ghrelin and your prominent satiety fat storage hormone leptin. The end result is you require few calories to achieve total dietary satisfaction. You can skip meals easily without adverse effects and accordingly have stored fat easily accessible for energy. Under these circumstances, you can tool, use tools like intermittent fasting or ketogenic periods to easily reduce any excess body fat anytime you want. All right, reducing risks, what does that mean? Well, the ketogenic diet reduces many health uh, risks that adversely impact our ability to be well. Some of the big ones that are scientifically proven are, of course, weight loss, which we discussed. Number two would be its anti-inflammatory effect. Most of our chronic diseases are driven by an excessive level of inflammation. Uh, once you enter into ketos ketosis or you're in a keto-adapted state, your body produces a greater anti-inflammatory response than it typically does. So you can see the benefit there. Um, also, upregulation of internal antioxidant enzymes. We all know what antioxidants are. They protect your body from oxidative stress that occurs with normal metabolism, but will get enzymes to increase like catalase, glutathione, which you may have heard of, and superoxide dismutase. Um, additionally, ketones promote, promote elevated neurotransmitter function. Some people report better at mental clarity, less brain fatigue, and even improved mood. Uh, another big one would be lowered blood sugar or lower long-term measures of blood sugar like A1C, which we know is directly related to uh, many diseases, cardiovascular disease and such. Um, it will also raise your HDL cholesterol, which is your good cholesterol. So, so many health benefits uh, for us from entering into a keto-adapted state. All right. 
what's on the menu then? All right, so now we understand, you know, what the ketogenic diet is. We've gone over some of the benefits. Let's get into what foods are allowed on this diet. So per the Keto Summit Online, keto acceptable foods include things like non-starchy vegetables, some berries, meats, organ meats. You can have some, some you know, green beans, peas, definitely healthy fats like ghee, coconut oil, olive oil, etc. You can have limes and lemons, nuts, nut butter, butters, bone broth, gelatin, vinegars, herbs, spices, fish, wonderful avocados, olives, coffee, tea, coconut, eggs. We'll go over more of this in detail, but there's so much that you can eat. All right, what do we got to get rid of here or what to ditch? Now let's take a look at what we'll be removing from our diet. Definitely all sugars. It's white sugar, fructose, corn syrup, honey, glucose, brown sugar, maple syrup, even agave, coconut sugar. Grains are gone too, I'm afraid. Wheat, white flour, uh, quinoa, rice, couscous, barley, corn, you know, millet, bran, buckwheat, and especially in the introductory phase, most fruits, whether they're canned or they're fresh, like apples, oranges, and pears, um, they need to be limited initially. And of course, easy ones, all processed foods like sodas, juices, and alcohol for the most part. And we'll discuss in another um, seminar what types of alcohol you can have if you really need to you know, indulge. Okay. What about breakfast? So top of the morning to you. There are lots of options for breakfast, both savory and sweet. So whatever you're craving, there are plenty of healthy recipes for you. I think in our clinic, our go-to is always eggs prepared any style, perhaps with some bacon. You could try a bowl full of chopped hard-boiled eggs, chopped bacon, walnuts, and sun-dried tomatoes drizzled with a little avocado or olive oil. It's delicious. Um, another great go-to is our, our omelets with pan-fried chopped veggies, can bacon. Um, you can put some avocado right in there or top it with salsa. Uh, some people are enjoying now the fed with high-fat coffee or tea, which is absolutely okay. Uh, you can have a macronutrient balanced smoothies on our clinics. Uh, now we use uh, ketogenic shakes. That can be a quick go-to. Um, or if you're really pressed for time, just eat your leftovers from dinner the night before. Here are a few links for you that you can see on the screen, and this is being recorded so you can go back and use these to grab some of our recipes. Okay, healthy lunch. For sure, for a lot of us, lunch happens on the go or is eaten without too much thought. With our busy lives, planning and preparing healthy lunches is gonna be a, a challenge, but it's worth it to take the time to prepare for your day, maintain your energy levels and your readiness. All right, here's some ideas. I would say in our clinic, our biggest recommendation is to have a salad for lunch. Now you can really vary it, but the nutrient density of a salad, uh, which is, you know, we can enjoy uh, leafy greens, sorted colorful vegetables, nuts, and a protein source like chicken, fish, or steak, amazing. You dress that with some olive oil, apple cider vinegar, and lots of spices, and simply you've got a winner there. Again, if you need, uh, we have ready-made uh, shakes. Uh, you can buy them now that are prepared, or you can make a uh, macronutrient balance shake at home. And they're also prepared keto soups, so it becomes easier and easier to stay in the keto guidelines. Again, here's some clips here, some links for uh, great lunch suggestions for you. And the dinner dance. Dinner is a time to sit down with the family and discuss the events of the day over a delicious, nutritious meal. Planning and eating well is a great way to be present in the moment and to share something special with your family. The easiest way to prepare for dinner is to focus it around two things, meat or fish and vegetables. With that, there's like a thousand choices that you can put together. Here you'll see we've put you know, some of our favorites up there, uh, but you can do anything. Now, we saved the best for last. And finally, rest assured, dessert is still on the table. Thankfully, so many people have made the move to healthy eating, resulting in countless healthy recipes out there that soothe the sweet tooth without all the added sugar. Some great choices would be berries, coconut milk pudding, dark chocolate in limited quantities, hard boiled eggs, nuts and seeds, in particular macadamia nuts are delicious and easy to come by, nut butter, 
Um, olives are a great uh, snack, maybe not so much a dessert, but they can, they can finish off a meal for you. Here's some healthy options for Mom's Texas Brownies, no baked cheesecake, keto chocolate chip cookies. And if you get that occasional need for a little something else, what we call taming that tummy rumble, it's important, you know, really, when you're trying to change bad eating habits to always be prepared for those sneaky cravings. But that's something that they're ready for those midday or after exercise cravings. It is easy to fall off track for something packaged, you know, and quick. So we've got some great ideas for you here. Homemade apple chips, vanilla pumpkin seed clusters, soy sauce marinated deviled eggs are delicious. There's a great spicy sausage cheese dip if you're not dairy free. Now, let's get to a little bit of science here. Let's debunk some of these myths that get thrown around and scare people away from the ketogenic diet. First, as with any diet, there are, are always naysayers or just honest questions that arise. Let's take a look at a few of the myths out there surrounding the ketogenic lifestyle. Okay, myth number one that I wanna address is that the brain needs glucose to maintain healthy function. Ketogenic diet does not provide it. Here's the truth. And this comes right from KetoCrate. It's an online food subscription website. Most people are aware that the brain is powered by glucose, but very few are aware that it can also run on ketones and that ketones may actually burn more efficiently with less waste. Once the body has become fully keto adapted, the brain gets up to 75% of its energy needs from ketones. The remaining 25% of the glucose uh, that is needed by the brain can be obtained by the body processing dietary proteins. Extra carbohydrates are not necessary for this process to happen. Okay, myth number two. A ketogenic diet is not nutritionally sufficient for proper vitamin absorption, resulting in dangerous vitamin deficiencies. Sounds really scary, right? Here's the truth. Uh, according to Ellen Davis, she's the author of the Ketogenic Diet Resource. In practice, you'll probably consume more vitamins and minerals on a ketogenic diet than you did on a standard American diet. As long as you're eating whole foods, that's natural fats, meats, leafy green vegetables, and not the packaged low-carb junk food, you're going to be great. Now, additionally, in our clinic, we supply all of our patients with a high-quality multivitamin, so nothing becomes an issue. We don't have any of the possible deficiency states that might exist. Number three, a ketogenic diet raises cholesterol, which could increase the risk of heart disease. Okay, so we need to talk about this. First of all, total cholesterol and LDL cholesterol based upon the scientific research are really only weak predictors of cardiovascular disease. Things like triglycerides, HDL, and LDL particle size, not to mention the HDL to triglyceride ratio, are much stronger predictors of cardiovascular disease. And guess what? Ketogenic diets improve triglyceride levels they lower them. HDL levels go up and LDL particle size also goes up, which is an improvement, reduces risk. So it's, it's really the story you, you may have been told or you heard is the opposite. Because look, despite continuous advances in the medical world, obesity, first of all, continues to remain a major worldwide health hazard with adult mortality as high as 2.8 million per year. The majority of our chronic diseases, like diabetes, hypertension, and heart disease are largely related to obesity, which is usually a product of unhealthy lifestyle and poor dietary habits. Appropriately tailored diet regimens for weight reduction can help manage the obesity epidemic to some extent. And of course, one diet regimen that's proven to be very effective for weight loss is a very low carbohydrate and high fat, that's right, ketogenic diet. Recent meta-analyses and epidemiologic studies show that replacement of carbohydrate with healthy fats, if anything, is beneficial for risk reduction. These results must be added to the failure of numerous large-scale population studies to show any correlation between even dietary saturated fat and cardiovascular disease. At the same time, most clinicians are acutely aware of the health risks, including cardiovascular disease, which rise when our blood sugar becomes elevated. We measure it in what's called the uh, A1C, 
And everybody across disciplines recognizes that an elevated A1C is related directly to all of those risk factors. And so the bottom line is that a ketogenic diet will improve the whole, most of the metabolic markers as well as reduce obesity, meaning improving body mass index, and make you more disease proof. Now, how to survive the first week. So when you're gonna go on a ketogenic style of diet, the first week, really about four days, you might be hungry a bit more. You might be a little bit more tired as your body's trying to become keto adapted. That means being efficient at using fats for a source of fuel. So you may need to relax a little bit. You're gonna to wanna to increase your intake of electrolytes, even things like salt or sodium, because now the kidneys will begin to flush sodium from the body. You might need a little bit more food during the, you know, the first few days. But once you enter ketosis, like we discussed before, your appetite will be under control and you will feel not just good, but likely better than you have in a long time. Another great little trick is to add some warm nourishment. A good way to get many of the nutrients needed in that first week is to drink a nice warm bone broth, which will provide you with fat, calories, salt, and fluid that you need in the diet to help carry you through that, that first few days. There's our link for the bone broth. I think you'll like that. All right, now let's talk about the psychological aspects of any type of diet. First, don't forget to celebrate those victories. Don't forget to check in along your journey to celebrate your successes. When you're embarking, what you're embarking on, it's not easy, and there will be some struggles along the way. So make sure you create a fun way to acknowledge your hard work by doing something special. You decide how often you wanna check in and schedule it so that those days never get missed. And so there's something to look forward to each week or month. In our clinic, we have our patients weigh in. Every week do we do a full body composition analysis to see how much muscle, fat, um, and water their bodies are holding. Uh, we also stay in contact with our patients. We provide as much contact as they need through phone, text, or email. Set that up for yourselves or see us and we'll be glad to help. Look, you're off and running. We covered a lot here today. You may be feeling a bit overwhelmed, but you've got this. You came here for a reason to make more informed, better decisions on the, on the food you eat for your health and well-being. You're on your way to making a difference in your life. And our hope is that the tools we provided today are just what you need to get started. We wanna thank you for your attendance today. It means a lot for us to be able to share a lesson with the people who are ready to make a difference. Now it's time to implement some of the things we discussed. Please reach out to us if you have any questions or concerns, we're here to help. This is our contact information and feel free to give us a call. Thanks, it's been a great pleasure to be with you here today and we wish you the very best.